What's up, family? All right, so Beyonce won an award that Bill O'Reilly lied about winning. <laughs> but what hasn't Bill O'Reilly lied about? He lies about everything. So far, we got Beyonce one and Bill O'Reilly zero. 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 All right, y'all, so Bill O'Reilly lied so much, I decided that after I read this story, I'm going to give y'all my top eight. Bill O'Reilly monumental lies of all time. And he told a lot of lies, so you know it's gonna be good. Okay, so it goes like this. Congratulations to Beyonce, whose visual album Lemonade continues to earn awards more than a year after its release. Alongside television shows like Atlanta and Veep, Entertainment Weekly reported Thursday that Lemonade won a Peabody Award in the organization's entertainment category. According to its website, the Peabody Awards recognize powerful storytelling. The 2017 awards were announced just one day after old footage circulated of Senator Al Franken calling out Bill O'Reilly, who was fired from his Fox News gig Wednesday for claiming to win a Peabody Award when in fact he never did. According to Raw's story, Franken and O'Reilly appeared together on a panel during Franken's book tour for lies and the lying liars who tell them a fair and balanced look at the right. After Franken spoke about his book in which he included O'Reilly's false claim about winning a Peabody, O'Reilly began to shout at him for what he insisted was a misunderstanding. Boy, I wish I'd have been in that room. Early in the evening, O'Reilly had reportedly bragged about never having to retract a story. See. This is why you don't retract things. You just continually lie, Franken said. O'Reilly yelled at Franken, which is not completely out of character for the former Fox News anchor, and told him, shut up. Hey, shut up, O'Reilly yelled. <laughs> you had your 35 minutes, shut up. <laughs> this, this guy accuses me of being a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, because I misspoke and called a Peabody a poke, O'Reilly repeated, Though, it's safe to assume he meant that he called a poke a Peabody. This is what this guy does. He demonizes it, and then other people pick it up. Now, if it's important to you that I misspoke, hmm, the Poke Awards are journalism prizes given by Long Island University. He didn't just misspeak, Franken said, implying O'Reilly knew exactly what he was doing. The ultimate irony is that a Peabody lists O'Reilly once criticized Beyonce for her music. In 2014, O'Reilly said Beyonce didn't deserve to be recognized as part of the Time 100 because her music promoted sex before marriage within the black community. So, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, <laughs> I'm gonna give you my top eight all-time Bill O'Reilly monumental lies. And you got to go back. You know, he's been doing this for, what, 40 years, 40, 50 years? He's been on Fox uh, colluding with them with a bunch of lies for 21 years. So here is my top eight all-time Bill O'Reilly lies. Number one, when O'Reilly got caught in a lie saying he mistakenly referenced the Peabody Award as a poke award, that was another lie. He bragged that he actually had won a poke award hosting Inside Edition. He won zero. To be specific, the show did win an award, but that was one year after Bill O'Reilly had already left. Safe to say that the show was probably better after he left. Number two, he repeatedly claimed he is an average guy. O'Reilly has claimed that he came from nothing and you don't come from any lower than I came from on the economic scale. Actually, O'Reilly's mother has repeatedly talked to the press about regular vacations the family took to Florida. 
that O'Reilly went to private school and college and that they lived in an affluent New York suburb. Why is it so important for him to tell these lies, to try to act like he came from humble beginnings so that he can attack those who haven't gotten there yet? And he can justify so he can be able to say, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, number three. In 2004, O'Reilly said Iraq was producing chemical weapons in the run-up to the 2003 Iraq war. That was a lie. Number four, he said the reason many, many, many of Hurricane Katrina's victims didn't leave New Orleans because of before the storm was because they're addicted to drugs and thugs who wouldn't let them leave without a fix. Actually, many victims were poor and owned no vehicles. Reasons for staying varied, but drug addiction was never a significant factor. Number five, during the 1992 LA riots, O'Reilly claimed that while reporting about those events, he was attacked by rioters. But several of his former colleagues at Inside Edition said what really happened was when he arrived at the scene of a smoldering neighborhood in a limousine, a man confronted him angrily over his behavior. Who the hell show up in the middle of a ride in a limousine? That goes to tell you something, man, about this dude's mental state. Number six, he claimed to have been present at the suicide of a figure who was sought for questioning in relation to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. But CNN retained an audio that contains the phone call between a congressional investigator obtained through his surviving widow and O'Reilly, which shows O'Reilly asking about the suicide, which would completely disprove he was actually present when the suicide occurred. Lying bastard. Number seven. When he got caught in a lie about witnessing the murder of nuns in El Salvador, he and Fox News decided to put a spin on the story and say that what actually had occurred was that Bill O'Reilly was looking at photos. <laughs> Number eight, O'Reilly claimed to see soldiers gunning down Argentine civilians with real bullets. But it was later revealed, and he admitted, he was never actually in the Fortland Islands where the military conflict took place. So this dude has a culture of lying, a history of lying. Fox News has a history of enabling him to lie, giving him a platform to lie, promoting him and marketing him as some type of stand-up, righteous guy to be modeled after. This guy is one of the most despicable human beings on the planet Earth, and it's a good thing that he's on his last leg. He got more. He got more days behind him than he got ahead of him, and that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. That he's very close to death, and we can get his ass on up out of here. And his replacement too. That would be cool too if he he had a short one. Fox News, they the worst. They are the absolute worst. And anybody that watches Fox News, I mean. These are people that are not interested in facts. All they're interested in is this make-believe world that they want to create. They don't care about facts. All they care about is their agenda. Does it fit my agenda? Okay, feed me. Feed me. Feed me what I want to hear. Not what I need to hear. Not what I need to know. I don't care about the truth. Just give me something that I can hold on to that 
can make me feel good about myself. Tell me how bad they are so I can know how good I am. Give me somebody that I can put beneath me, that I can look down on, so I can feel good about my lot in life. That's what Fox News is really about. And of course, the bottom line, the money. They, they really, really, really bought that money. They want that money. And a Bill O'Reilly, as far as your, your claim of Beyonce making music that promote sex and you know sex before marriage in the black community, I'm gonna tell you like this. Promoting sex in the black community before marriage is better than demanding sex before consent in the workplace. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.